Good morning, little people. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We are live on uh, July 23rd, Thursday morning in the Kweachko household. A um, few minutes after breakfast here and we are doing gospel commentary as we normally do in the mornings. Um, so those of you who might uh, be interested to tune in, we do these uh, commentaries of the gospel uh, with my family here every uh, breakfast time. Once in a while we uh, stream it live. <clears throat> Otherwise, <clears throat> uh, you can catch it on my Facebook page if you don't catch us live. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> well, today we're still commenting on the Gospel of St. Matthew. Today's Mass. Um, the Gospel comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. So the disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak to the crowd in parables? You see, Jesus... This is the habit of Jesus. This is the way he was teaching uh, the, uh, the Jews, the crowds. The crowds here would mean just, you know, the ordinary Jews of his time, right? And he would tell them stories, parables. Parables are like stories. They're more like riddles that they have some hidden meanings behind them, right? So like, like what kinds of parables are we familiar with in the gospel? Can you name some? Seed and hmm? The sower and the seeds, yeah. The sower who went out to sow, right? The seeds. The seeds fell on rocky ground, on good ground, and thorny ground, right? What else? What other parables do you recall from the gospel? The prodigal son. The what? The prodigal son. That's good, Joe. The story of the prodigal son. Okay. What else? Any more? Uh, huh? What's that, Jenna? Oh, <coughs> the, virgin. the what? The ten oh, the virgins. Yeah, the ten virgins. Right? So there are many of these. Many of these. And, and as you can imagine, if you recall uh, these parables, they're actually stories about the most ordinary events that the Jews were familiar with, right? So the ten virgins, they had this custom, right? Of virgins coming out with la uh, lighted lamps to meet the bridegroom and etc. The sower and the seed, it's the most ordinary thing that they witness. I mean, you know, people plant, right? The weed and the cockle coming out together. The prodigal son, you know, same thing. The sheep and the shepherd, the good shepherd, right? So these are ordinary events in the normal lives of people. And our Lord uses these kinds of images and stories to try to communicate God's will on them, on people. He uses parables to try to communicate the will of God. He tries to use parables to teach people about how to live their lives in accordance to God's will. And stories like these tend to drive home the point okay, of the, the, the moral of the, of the story or the lesson he was trying to teach them. However, however, the people seem to be so dense. They seem to be so incapable of absorbing the lessons that Jesus is teaching them, despite the fact that they are um, already about ordinary life. They're already about the normal things that they do every day, yet they still don't seem to get it. Right? The question there is why? And let's continue reading. So why do you speak to the crowds in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you. You, meaning the apostles first. 
but to them it has not been granted. Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, to the apostles. To them it has not been granted. Why was that? Why was that? Let's continue. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. That is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see. They hear but do not listen and understand. So let's stop there. Our Lord gives us the answer why he speaks to them in parables. Because they look but do not see and hear but do not understand. So, our Lord tries to make use of parables to communicate lessons to people using ordinary circumstances of everyday life because that would perhaps be the best way that they can understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Because to the apostles, our Lord can speak directly because they, they are disposed to listen to Jesus. They have been chosen and they had said yes to the vocation that Jesus had called them to in their lives. Which is what? Which is to precisely be the ministers of his church, right? Later on. So they, uh, to be his first priests, to be, to be the people who are the recipients of the good news so that they can disseminate it to others later. So because they are disposed to listen to the message of Jesus Christ, then they understand the mysteries of the kingdom. But for the majority of people, they are not yet disposed to listen. They are not disposed. Their hearts are not uh, softened up enough to try to absorb the message of Jesus Christ. So he tries to uh, uh, communicate with them through, uh, through parables, through stories, that hopefully through this kind of uh, storytelling strategy, and, and pedagogy, method of teaching, then they absorb little by little what he's talking about. Now, but there's another reason why these people were not so predisposed to listen to Jesus' message. Just like the Pharisees and the scribes. Why were they not disposed to listen to Jesus' message? Huh? Why? Because of one very important sin, actually, which, which they harbor in their hearts. And that is? What sin is that? Huh? The sin of? Pride. Pride. They were too proud to accept Jesus and his message. They were too proud. They were so focused on themselves. They were so focused on what they think they already know about the kingdom of God and about how, they, how the kingdom of God was to come upon them that they rejected Jesus. They rejected his message. They did not believe him. They didn't take him seriously. And most of the people were like that too. See? Most of them were like that too. They were not disposed to hear the word of God, to listen to the word of God and accept the, the word of God and, and, and live by it. So our Lord tries to deal with them, you know, through the little parables that he tells them. And hopefully some of them might catch the message and, and live up to it. Now, what's the, what's the moral for us? How can we apply this gospel message to our lives? I think it is this way. You see, our Lord also communicates to us His will through the stories of our everyday lives, through the things that happen to us every day, much like the parables. 
The parables were about the ordinary lives of the Jews. And Jesus was trying to tell them a story to derive some lessons from it. The same thing is true with us today. Today, our Lord speaks to us also through the ordinary circumstances of our everyday lives. The ordinary things of our everyday lives, those are the parables. Those are the modern day parables that our Lord tries to communicate His will through to us. The nice things that happen in our lives, the sad things that happen in our lives, the, the tragedies, the joys, the struggles, the challenges that we have in our lives. These are avenues by which Jesus is trying to talk to us, is trying to send us a message, is trying to tell us what His will is for us at every moment of the day. The question to us is, are we disposed to... Uh-oh, what's that? Oh, the baby's crying. Are we disposed to listen to what Jesus is trying to tell us? Are our hearts ready to accept what Jesus tells us every minute of the day? Are we ready to absorb the lessons that our Lord is trying to communicate to us through the ordinary circumstances of our everyday lives? Let us ask ourselves that, that, that important question. And how are we going to be disposed? What is an important virtue that we should live in order to be disposed to listen to God's message every day? What's that, Jana? Humility. Of course, humility, the opposite of pride. Right? Humility. If the Pharisees were proud, and that's what caused the big problem for them to listen to Jesus, well, the opposite of that, the antidote to that, is the virtue of humility. And how do we practice humility in, 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 in our own lives? How will we practice it? Okay? I have one very important uh, uh, prescription of how we, how we will practice humility, especially for each and every one of you. One very important uh, um, uh, way to practice humility is to learn to listen. Learn to listen. Like what our Lord said here, right? They have ears, but they don't listen. They have eyes that can look, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't listen. Listen, listening, listening is the first step to being humble. Listen to who or to what should we listen to? <laughs> what are you pointing at me? Huh? <laughs> huh? Yep, in case, in your situation, in your situation, you children have to listen to your parents. That's the first, that's the first uh, 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 thing we need to practice in order to learn to be humble. Learn to listen. That when your parents tell you things, when we, Papa and Mommy, tell you things, okay, have the disposition of being open, immediately open, and say, and, and really bar and, and, and remove every preconceived ideas in your heads and just listen. Right? Just listen. What is it that my papa or my mommy is telling me? What is it that my parents want me to understand right here, right now? That is the first step to humility because it's very easy to just ignore what, what your parents tell you. It's very easy to immediately entertain some of your preconceived ideas and, oh, wait a minute, I think I have a better idea. Oh, wait a minute, I don't feel like doing that because... Right? That is pride. That is the sin of pride. So in order to counteract that, every time our parents call our attention, we should immediately stop and just focus on what we are being told, on what we, we, we are being uh, asked to consider. 
Okay? Because that is the way to be humble. That is a manifestation of humility. And that is the way we will learn lessons from the parables of our everyday lives. Learn to listen. First step. What's the next step after listening? Okay. Huh? Okay. Obey, of course. To obey, right? To obey. To obey immediately. If you're told to do something, obey, right? But there's a third. There's a third prescription. If you want to be humble, if you want to be, if you really want to listen, if you really want to obey, what is the third thing you need to do? The third thing is you pray about it. You pray about it. So, uh, um, uh, considering it in prayer, asking our Lord, our Lady, uh, help me understand this. Help me understand what, what my papa or my mommy is telling me now or what they want me to do. Please help me understand. You can ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you so that you understand what is being told to you. And then that is the best way that you can be humble, you can obey and execute what you are being told and apply to your personal life what lessons you derived out of the parables of daily life. Okay? So, let's summarize. How can we, how can we practice humility? First, by? Listening. By listening. Very good, Chevelle. Number two? By obeying. And number three? By praying about it. Okay? Praying about it. So these are the ways that we could live up to whatever lessons our Lord wants to communicate to us through the parables of our everyday life. That's it for us, folks. Thank you for joining us this morning. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey, Ava. Bye. Ava's awake already. Do you want to say hi, Eva? Huh? Say hi? <laughs> okay, she's not in the mood yet. Okay, bye everybody.